Is this the end you were looking for? It is the end. I deserve it. Legend holds that the sword used by the Knight of the Morning Star was forged on the second full moon of December, the year he was born. The sword's strength came from the 5,000 blows it suffered, a trial of fire. of water. Thus arose a weapon of magnificent purity and strength. A sword fit for a king. But first, it had to find its master. Don Beltran, may I have a word? I had hoped to present this to you at a happier time. This sword was forged in honor of your fallen hero. Juan was a good son, the best you could ever have had. Thank you, senor, for always standing by in these difficult times. Little Inigo here. He's ready to rejoin the family at Torre de Loyola as soon as you wish it. Let's talk about that some other time. Thank you, old friend. still will not bring him back. Someday, Don Beltran will accept that the boy is not to blame for his mother's death. Until then, let the old man grieve for his beloved wife and now for his firstborn son. Another go, my knight. We are done for now. Very well. <clears throat> Next week I may need you again. If you are still around by then. <laughs> What do you know? We women know everything, Capitan. 
<laughs> Try in one week, cousin. Huh? Are you actually chastising me, Cabron? <laughs> I'm just saying you need variety. That one is good. But she's not that good. She reminds me of someone. What news from Castile, Santi? It looks like our young king is learning how to be king. After he executed those three rebel leaders last week, the comuneros have started surrendering. And the queen? She is still being held by the rebels along with the princess. Enemies everywhere. And we are stuck with a commander who keeps making us do marching drills. While the South rebels, the North is unprotected, and the cursed French know it. It is only a matter of time before the attack. We shall know soon enough. Our spy returns from Vienna tomorrow. What is your wager, Sandy? Two, three thousand men at our doorstep by the week's end? You sound almost excited to see them. We are soldiers, Santi, not guards. For three years, we've done nothing except throwing drunks in jail. We were meant for more than this. And to prove that, you are willing to die. How would you like your death to be? <laughs> Peaceful. I would like to die in my sleep, in the arms of Oh, my beautiful wife. If I ever find one. And you? How would you want to die? In battle. And before I take my final breath, I wish to look my brother in the eye and say, See? I too am a Loyola. <laughs> Martin will never let you have the last word. Never. You think too much, Emilio. You think too much. Drink more. Think less. Above all, a knight needs three things. A god to serve, a king to obey, and a lady to protect from all who would harm her. At any hour, day or night, he must be ready. <laughs> You may be good, assassin, but I am better. Did I not tell you? Death comes to all who dare threaten my lady, the Princess Catalina. Who threatens me? Who are you talking to? No, 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 what is here, Your Highness? I was just practicing. I beg your forgiveness. Did I disturb Your Highness slumber? Not at all. I could not sleep, so I decided to look for the library. Unfortunately, Your Highness, the library has been removed to make way for the new aviary. Oh, that's a shame. It falls to you to entertain me then, sir. Inigo de Loyola, Your Highness. I'm not a sir. I'm just a humble soldier of the Duke of Nájera. And I fear I'm not a very good entertainer, Your Highness. Inigo, it is the middle of the night, and there is nobody here to impress with your protocol. So please, call me Catalina. Very well, my lady Catalina. Hmm. I heard you speaking to someone. Just a figment of my imagination. It is a technique. My father taught me, always visualize your opponent as if he were flesh and blood before you. 
It seems your father is to find swordsman. Do you really use those elaborate movements in battle? It has often proved useful, your highness. It's almost like you were dancing. Half of what I know of sword fighting, I learned from dancing. You are a dancer? I used to be a page in Erevalo. It was in our training. Perfect. Now I know how you can entertain me. Now, impress me, Inigo de Loyola. That was not proper of me. I forbid you to think that. Yes, my lady, but I must insist. I know. Neil Loyola. No one will know about this, and no one will remember, except you and me. Tonight, I bind thee to myself as my knight, my hidden protector. Now swear to guard my life and my honor, as long as you live. I swear. This is my last night in this castle. I return to the Queen's household at dawn. If we never meet again, promise that you will think kindly of me, my knight, and serve my kingdom well. I would die for you. For my sake, do not. Commander is right. You do dress for the victory feast before the battle has been fought. <laughs> he misunderstands. I dress for the casket. <laughs> Good morning, Lord Commander. Montes, you're early. <laughs> My nights are not as exciting as yours. Enough. Proceed. As expected, the French commander, Lord Asparros, has entered here and has encountered very little resistance. The people of Navarra support him because Asparros wants to drive us out and put the former king of Navarra back on the throne. How many? 12,000, possibly more. They will not stop attacking Navarra. With a force that large, they intend to march into Castile itself. With a force that large, we'll have to let them. Sir, our orders were to defend Pamplona at all costs. Be reasonable, Inigo! We have less than 300 men here! Pamplona is lost, Loyola. The city may be lost, Montes, but our garrison will hold. 
We have 18 cannons. We can concentrate our fire on the opposing artillery. Also the cavalry. Hit the horses. Slow them down. The French cannot proceed towards Castile without taking us out. We can hold them off for two or maybe three days. Three days? You would sacrifice the lives of your men for three days' advantage? Commander, with all due respect, how many kings have lost their crowns because their reinforcements arrived a day late? We are at war. There is a very real chance the fate of the kingdom could depend on our buying Castile sometime. Whatever time we can give them. I say we stand our ground. I say we fight. And if we die, we die knowing that France has tasted a Spanish blade against his face. The much we owe our king. They are early. Our troops. The enemy. We will be at the gates by morning. Your command, sir. Close the gates. Tell the men to make their confession. Tomorrow we seal our fates. Peristam sancta muntionem, et suam finissima misericordiam, indulgia tibi dominus quid quid pervisum, audiotum, odoratum, gustum et locutionem, tactum gresum deliquisti, in nomine Patre, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Busy day, Padre. Then seek God most urgently when they're about to meet him, Capitan Loyola. Shall I hear your confession? By the time we finish, the war would be over, Padre. Bring all the ammunition out. Spare nothing. Make sure that powder stays dry. You have signed our dead warrant. I think we did that when we joined the army. Do not pretend to be one of us. When Navarra falls, your noble blood will buy you safe passage. The French will not be as courteous to these men. Look at them. Look. Do you see any illusions of glory in their eyes? No. They do this for their pay and the dim chance of going home. Well, today we teach them to fight for something greater. That's the problem with you. In your head, you are already a general, so ready to sacrifice your troops. But you're many the captain who cares about getting them out alive. Here is how the last battle of the brave knight came to pass. My lord, take this to Loyola. The soldiers are ready. D'accord. Toi à droite et toi à gauche. On avance.
to the bridge! Repel the master! Inigo, Inigo, wake up. Inigo. Open your eyes. Inigo, open your eyes, bastardo! Feliz time, Sanka Muntion. I'm so happy to see my misericordia. I'm going to use the activity on the with permission. No, he is not dying! Oh, not dying. Oh, not dying. No. You hear me, fool? You hear me? You are staying here with us. I joined my brothers. <laughs> Glory. Your brothers are in the ground. You are saying about it. Now shut up and let this damn fool of a magic do his work. As he lay dying, the knight's heart thanked heaven for this one last gift. A warrior's death. Get up. Get up. First principle. If your enemy is angry, but you are calm, then you have already won. Hey! Your stance is off. Fix your footwork. No! Never let your eyes leave your opponent. Balance, Inigo, balance! Every battle in the world has hinged upon who can stay on his feet. Again. Do it better. Hey. What did I tell you? Remember, son. We are men of Loyola. We do not look down. Now get up. Where, where am I? You're home. You're home. Come on! Careful with me. In my professional opinion, this leg may never heal properly unless we break it again and reset it. 
we will do what we can, but then it is up to God. If the patient does not improve within three days, he may be expected to die. The rebels have surrendered, and Castillo's troops are on the way three days at most. When they arrive, we march for Pamplona. Must you? We do it for Inigo. If he lives, I want him to know that we crushed the cursed French. If he doesn't, then at least we will have avenged his death. You are home and alive. Thanks be to God. Drink this. Oh, that is disgusting. Be glad you are still alive to complain about it. The doctors were not at all hopeful. I had a dream about him. He told me I would live. And on his feast day, somebody is watching over you. What does he look like? The doctors are hopeful that you will walk again, Inigo. Someday. But nobody goes through cannon fire unscathed. What is that? Not unscathed, Inigo. Be glad you came back in better shape than your brother Juan. Maybe. But he came back a hero. A dead hero. Drink your tonic. Why do you wear that uniform if you are not fit to be a soldier of You Castillo? cannot defend me with that leg. You're useless. Be gone from my sight, you. I knew it from the start. You are not worthy of that sword. And of our name. Go. Get me a surgeon! Now! Are you sure? Are you holding? The doctor says it will be two months until you can venture outside. This tower is my prison until then. It will be hard. But you must try to find things to fill your time. Your servant brought this here. You may also find these interesting. You found the books? The Adventures of Amadis? No, Inigo, I'm sorry. I had Julian go to every nobleman's house from here to Donostia, but he could not find it. These here are the only books in the entire house. The life of Christ. The lives of the saints. Hermana, only my brother Pedro will find this interesting. He's the priest, not me. I also found this in the pocket of your uniform. I thought to save it.
It has been washed. It had to be. It was soaked in your blood. safe at last. Just as you desire. <laughs> Our cousin, we did it! <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, venga! Claro que sí! Venga! venga! Por Castilla! Por Castilla! That should have been my battle. My victory. You were outnumbered, Inigo. Then it should have been my close death. They should have left me at that wall tonight. Perhaps you would be proud of me, huh? Come, Inigo. Do not say that. Of course we are proud of you. I keep thinking. Why was I born into such tedious times? Everything has been done. There are no more quests to be taken. No more dragons to battle or maidens to rescue. Now all we have are petty family quarrels. His royal cousins fighting over patches of Spanish mud. The world is changing, Inigo. Maybe it's time for a new dream. It has been three months since the knight was injured in battle. And one thing is clear. There is nothing more crushing to the spirit than the partnership of pain and boredom. And of course he would dream of her. His lady, his sweet Catalina. What he would give to be by her side, to serve her and die for her. These dreams would always end with the painful truth that a life with her was impossible. 
Not with this leg. Not with this fate. These thoughts of all he had lost made him descend into torment, anguish, and despair. of the saints. On these pages immortalized are the lives of the holy ones of God. These knights of heaven whose hands have wrought great deeds in the name of the Almighty. The knights of heaven. To his surprise, our knight found himself enraptured by these tales, marveling at the courage and noble deeds of the great saints. It is one thing for a soldier to be brave, facing a foe with a sword in your hand. It is quite another to face hunger and humiliation, with nothing but your faith in the providence of an unseen God. How is it that you can do this, Francisco? To give up your tremendous riches for life? of begging for scraps from the very people you used to call your servants. You ask the wrong question, friend. How is not important? There is only why. Because it is what my lord had done. What are the riches I gave up compared to the riches of heaven? The faith in God is far greater than mine. It is not my faith that is great, but my God. Could you not do the same? These thoughts were different. They did not turn his heart dark. Rather, they left him basking in a radiant and lasting joy. Here, maybe, was where his true desires lay. Could he do the same? To trust as they did in God. To swear fealty and loyalty to the greatest king of all. That night, he made a decision. That night, he found his dream. A what? A pilgrim. He wants to go to Jerusalem and beg his way there, like the holy pilgrims of old. But he's a Loyola. We cannot allow this. What will people say? Never mind. I will take care of this the way we always have. Between brothers. Here we are. Just like old times. A little grimy at the times. What are you talking about? Oh, this is perfect. Right. We're together again. Mesonero! Mesonero! Yes, Wine and bosoms. Welcome, my lord. Come on. Carmen. <laughs> Carmen. <laughs> you look beautiful tonight. <laughs> it has been so long. We miss your handsome faces. Where have you been? He's been to war. Me too. Where are you enjoy? Oh, yes. 
But nothing that a good round of hip exercise cannot loosen up. <laughs> oh, he's in dire need of medical attention. Mm. Anna is a very good nurse. <laughs> so, let us not waste more time. Let's go to the healing room with him. Okay. Come on. To Let's the go. healing room. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> please, please. I, I do not wish to. Are you all right, my lord? Let us just, please, 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 just <sighs> sit and be quiet, all right? Let my brothers finish and, and then we can leave. I'll pay you the same. As you wish, my lord. <clears throat> So you've been doing this long? Long enough. Hmm. You were my third customer back in the day, my lord, if you remember. Uh, do they treat you well here? Better than at home, I can't complain. At home? My father was a drunkard, my mother was a slut. They beat me, both of them. I have forgotten most of it. Uh, I'm sorry about that. It must have been hard. It got better after my father died. When I moved here, I had nothing on my feet. Now I have a bit of money saved. I make dresses. Mm. You made this dress? Yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. One day I go off and become a seamstress or something. Something respectable. It's my dream. And why not now? Why not now? Yes. Yeah, why not now? And you were right. Yes, yes, my lord. Sorry. Well, don't be sorry. <laughs> you are the first person I have spoken to in a long time that does not want me to get naked and then leave. I don't know if I can live this life. And I look into the mirror while I see the whore. What is your name? Anna. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that the Blessed Virgin's mother was named Anna? I know the stories. Then you must know that some of the Lord's closest friends were prostitutes. Mm -hmm. Anna, could you try something for me? Yes, my Lord. Could you see if you can imagine Jesus sitting in that chair. In, in that chair right there? Yes. Can you imagine it? <sighs> Just try. Take your time. He's looking at me. And he's smiling. A, a very kind smile. 
and he's looking at me like he's been doing it for all my life. And what is he saying to you? That he understands me. That he loves me. That he does not care where I've been, he just cares where I'm going. You happy? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm okay. I'm perfect. <laughs> Looks like tonight did you good, brother? <laughs> Well, then you know. <laughs> there is nothing more to learn here in Loyola. I began my life in this castle. I almost died here. Tonight, I realized that my reprieve from death has a condition. I must leave this place forever. Returning to Nakhara? to do then give me your blessing and wish me well you are needed here in New York. seriously brother what good am I do you here I am a damned cripple I shall never be presentable at court again and my soldiers they would sooner follow a cross-eyed dunk into battle than this, hobbling fool. I was willing to give my life in service of our king. I almost did. And now, not 40 days after I've almost been killed, Pamplona has been returned to Castile as if nothing had happened. All my sacrifices, brother. What were they for? Nobody's asking you to be a hero. We are asking you to stay. Help around the castle. Make sure the matters are attended to. So you want me to be a clerk? A secretary? Oh, brother, you burdened me with too much honor. What did you see? Our coat of arms. What do you see? Seven red bars on a gold field, and two rampant gray wolves flanking a cooking pot. The red bars, as you know, were granted by the king to honor the bravery of the seven brothers, Onyath, your forebears. The wolves and the pot stand, stand for the generosity of the Loyola family. That after our men have eaten, there is enough for even the wolves, I know. That is what we tell the world. Do you know what it actually means? It is a warning to all descendants of the house of Loyola. In you. Not all men are noble. Most are loyal only to the hand that feeds them. Without the pot, the wolves will devour us whole. Oh, 
family needs you. Of that alone, I am certain. The Pilgrim Knight. A new life. A new quest. I thought I would feel much sorrow at leaving my old self behind. But my only regret is that I did not start out sooner. He will be back. My uncle Antonio was the same. After he was hit by this arrow in Italy, he started on a holy quest to some mountain in Portugal. Five days later, he was back at that threshold. Inigo has always been incredibly stubborn. Hey, he will be back. Keep an eye on him for me then, primo. I will make it worth your while. 500 reales. If you bring him back before the month is out. When a knight is first sworn to the service of his lord, he must undergo the vigil of arms. Three days he stays there. He spends listing down his sins, looking through every nook and cranny of his life for the smallest stain. And then he makes his vigil before his lady, the Queen of Heaven and vows fealty to her and to the Lord God forever. Finally, he dons his magnificent new armor. He emerges from the darkness into the world that needs him. A warrior on the side of the angels. A knight of heaven itself. Bread? No, I deeply apologize, friend. I do not. Then, what good are you? Wait! Take this. You need to stay warm. What's this? Clothes. Trade it, sell it for food. Anything you wish. And take this as well. Thank you!
Oni ni go dele ola. Perhaps you'd better come with me, my lord. Hermano, hermano. Water, water, bring some water. We found him wearing the clothes he stole from you. He did not steal them. I gave them to him freely. <coughs> and who told you these were my clothes? Huh? I did. Shanti. You are here to bring me back to Loyola. I am merely offering you a ride. Your bare feet are not used to these cobblestones. You already know what my answer is. <coughs> I'm begging you, Inigo. Inigo, please. At least take this for your journey. Fucking hell, doctor. Tell Martin I am dead. I'm begging you. From then on, the pilgrim kept to the side roads and small towns. He could not risk his kinsmen finding him again. He had made a vow and he would fulfill it. He set out to live as San Francisco de Assisi and Santo Domingo lived, to own nothing, to beg for subsistence. The first time he sat down to beg, he felt like a fraud, a pretender. Thank you. Thank you. But as the last of his money dwindled and his hunger grew, his need became real. And this became my real skin. The skin of a beggar.
I caught one of my servants taking food from my larder just to give to you because of something you said to him. I deeply apologize. No need. He's my most obnoxious servant, and it was good to see him do something selfless, even if it did involve petty crime. Do you always do this? Beg all day and then give the food to the patients at night? This is a compulsion. These patients are helpless. I can go out and beg, so I beg for them. They call me Doña Inés de Pascual. What is your name? Inigo. Inigo? Like the first king of Pamplona? I would say I am the cripple of Pamplona, senora. Very well, senor Inigo, the cripple of Pamplona. You are not the first soldier to come here and try to attempt to change his life, nor are you the first nobleman. No, don't deny this. I can spot noble blood a league away. But I do see something special in what you are doing and how you do it. So for however long you wish to pursue this life of poverty and fasting and begging and doing good deeds, you are always welcome at my table. And my entire means are at your disposal. You are sent by God, Doña Inés. I know. My life in Manresa slowly fell into its sound rhythm. By day, we would bring bread to the needy. At times, we would tend to the lonely patients in the hospital. It was tiring work, but we persisted. At night, I would retreat to a cave by the river Cardoner, where I worked to pay off my debt to Christ. <laughs> Suffice it to say, God took his time to teach me, as if I were a child. And nearly 10 months after arriving in Manresa, I left the cave a new man. This, of course, was God preparing me for what was to come. This tribunal of the Holy Office of the Inquisition is formally convened. A trial is the man known as Hilligo Lopez de Oñaji Loyola, formerly a soldier of the Kingdom of Castile, now accused of the following grave charges. Preaching without authority, consorting with and seducing the women of Salamanca, Holding clandestine occult meetings in the middle of the night. If the accused is sentenced to be consigned to the fire, this shall be done at month's end. Judgment shall be rendered before them. Did I bring this upon myself? Should I have kept silent? How are new brothers doing, Calisto? Brother Cáceres is a fine worker. Uh, 
But I'll take it here. It's too quiet. Far too quiet to be one of us. I don't think he will last long. Well, Arteaga is simply following Brother Inigo's rule. Listen more and speak less. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just misses his 50 servants and his fine clothes that do not eat. I admit, today I miss the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> For instance, you, brother, when you pray, what do you ask for? I pray for the usual blessings, a long life and prosperity for myself and my family. And why do you pray for this? Because they are good. Is it not right to ask for good things from God? Consider, brother, that great wealth has brought fear and misery to many. We find that that wealth now controls their whole lives. Consider that a long life can also become miserable and lonely. Yes, but what then should we pray for? Perhaps we should pray for indifference. I do not mean cold-heartedness, but an indifference to whether God grants you riches or poverty, good health or poor. As long as your wealth, poverty or length of life helps you with your mission. What do you mean by mission, brother? When you woke up this morning, what were the things you planned to do? I am a merchant, so I thought about the new shipment of goods coming in today mm -hmm. and the meeting with a new customer in the afternoon. And then I remember it and my cousin insisted that I come listen to you. <laughs> if you imagine yourself on your deathbed, how will this day appear to you then? I think I might have chosen to visit my own mother before going to the shop. And I might have spent a little more time with my son. These new thoughts, how do they make you feel? They feel right. <laughs> or how do I say it? If I did not have to do anything else, these are the things I would choose. If you did not have to do anything else, what really do we have to do in this life? We'll worry so much about the urgencies of each day, trying to meet the demands of the world around us. But in the end, we look back and see an endless chain of very busy but meaningless days. We are ships that sail around for years but never get anywhere because we have no destination in mind, no map to guide us. And the map I will give you is called Living by the First Principle, that God created us to be loved immensely by Him and to love Him in return. If this is true, then the best possible use of our life is to take what we have been given and use them to serve and glorify God. All other things in this world have been put here for that purpose. Material riches, knowledge, and skill, dreams and desires. Even your ailments and misfortunes can bring you deeper into his love. So, each day, pray not for good things to happen to you, but pray that you be drawn closer to God, that every action we take be done for his glory. And then your life will be well lived. Make sure she gets the food. A fine sermon. Oh, forgive me, Padre. It was just a conversation among friends. Yet a finer sermon than I've heard in years, even from my own lips, if I'm to be honest. Are you and your companions from a religious order? No, we are just simple men. I see. And the common dress? It's just a sign of our kinship. Are you not afraid it would mislead others into thinking you preach as ordained priests? That is not our intention. Capitan Loyola! It is you, is it not? 
Not anymore. I see. Trying on a new face. Running away from an old one. Let me ask you. If you could hear the voice of God, if you learn how to hear it, would you want to keep it secret? How are you so sure it is God who speaks to you? In you? I have written it all here. It involves a period of time away from the world, spent meditating on the life of our Lord, picturing oneself in the events of his life or kneeling before the throne of God. You knew I must ask. This method, mind prayer, imagination, it sounds very similar to that of the Alumbrados, the Illuminati. You are not one of them, are you? The Alumbrados are not serious thinkers, Padre. Very careless. My method is thorough. I would very much like to continue this conversation, Nigo. Perhaps you will come to dinner at the monastery where I am staying. <laughs> I am sure some of the Dominican scholars would also enjoy meeting you. So, you're a preacher. What do you preach? No, Padre, I'm not a preacher. I only have informal conversations. Informal conversations, yes. Sanchez here has told me that. But I do not believe you. At the very least, I cannot respect you. If you want to preach, preach. Christ spits out the lukewarm. Let us call it preaching then, shall we? What do you preach? Nothing you would consider strange, Padre. Virtues and vices. How to love one and hate the that other. That is a very simple matter. Even children know to love virtue and hate vice. Why then do you need to preach about this? It is simple when a thing is clearly one or the other, but there are so many choices that are not so stark. The choice to take a wife or become a priest, for instance. Brother Inigo has developed a method of discernment for... A method of prayer for discerning the will of God by examining one's experiences. Emotions, the movements in one's soul. This sort of endeavor seems very peculiar, unnecessary, and possibly dangerous. Holy Mother Church has done well for centuries, without need for such radical experimentation. My method has saved lives, starting with my own. Many a liar has said that. I will say no more. But you will. I think you will. And if you really think this new method of yours is of that much value to the Church, then you would not object to a rigorous examination, correct? It is not. Yet so for the firm has to be ready for a review. And yet, it is ready to expose to simple Christian people, to expose their souls to possible error and damnation. My method is sound. I must still refuse. I didn't say it was your choice. You shall remain here in our custody until the tribunal arrives. Tribunal? Inquisitor Frias is a friend of ours. He will take good care of you. Thing. All of us did. What? We did not want you to suffer alone. But, but the people, who will take care of them? They are wrong in you. They heard about what happened to you, and they are all afraid. After all our work, no one remains. It is easy to have faith when all is going well. Christ had only one person returned to thank him. You at least had three. 
We will get through this, brother. We are with you till the end. And let us pray this is not the end. Padre Sanchez, do you have any more dinner invitations for me? I apologize for what happened in you. It was not my intention. I did not have to come all this way for an apology. A letter would have been enough. You're a busy man. I have been assigned to be your defense before the tribunal. Which means it is your duty to make me confess. I heard that the Inquisition now has the power to confiscate a guilty person's property. So, here I offer it to you in advance. My entire fortune. Let us be serious, Inigo. Frias is a very harsh man. He has burned more suspected alumbrados, suspected than any other tribunal member in all of Spain, perhaps all of the church. I have faced death before. It does not scare me. Your companions are probably not as courageous as you. You know your sentence shall be theirs as well. If you do not wish to save yourself, perhaps you should think about saving them. What is your plan? We must do two things. First, we have to present your work, your writings. What shall we call them? The spiritual exercises. Very well, the spiritual exercises. We have to present them with proof that they come from Holy Scripture or divine inspiration. And second, we must get as many witnesses as we can to testify to your good character. I am Doña Ines Pascual. My name is Agustin Crisostomo. I am the doctor at the hospice of Manresa. I am Jerónimo Ardevold, currently regent of the University of Barcelona. I am Dr. Ciruelo. I speak on behalf of two noble women, a mother and a daughter, who were entrusted to my care. I would see this man, Inigo, almost every day, tending to the sick and feeding them gently. One time, I saw him touching a man's wound with his finger, and then bringing that finger up to his own mouth. Inigo first came to me after returning from Jerusalem. He was seeking to take up the formal education he had foregone because of his military career. It was strange to see a 33-year-old man reading books made for 13-year-old boys. He would spend seven or eight hours on his knees denying himself sleep in order to pray. His severe penances, his fasting, his lack of sleep led him to become ill, and we would have to nurse him back to health. Of course, I was shocked, and I asked him what he was doing. He said, that he had felt a sudden disgust with the stench of the man's open wounds. And so he forced himself in that manner to be one with that person's filth and stench. Now we are one and the same. A stubborn man, but he is also very humble. He bore the embarrassment well and did the work. He believed very strongly that without an education, he would be ill-equipped to influence his fellow men and turn them towards the light. I found out that they had started attending the secret meetings organized by this man, Inigo, and his followers. He would never speak to any of the ladies alone, but always in company. They claimed to have visions like that of Christ speaking to them from the cross. After just one week of listening to the charlatans preaching, my two wards decide to go off on a pilgrimage, on foot. A strange man, given to a strange habit. 
but I cannot deny his devotion. He was a welcome presence in my world. I know this man. He is a good man. Words were to be his new weapon, and he was determined to master them. This man speaks with the voice of the devil. For the sake of our women, he must be silenced. These gatherings, your followers say you, you give them their spiritual exercises. What are these? They start from a simple idea. Man was made to know God, to give glory to God and reciprocate his man's love. If this is our ultimate purpose, then whatever brings us towards God causes inner joy and peace, what I call consolation. And whatever brings us away from God causes anguish, pain and emptiness, what I call desolation. Using the spiritual exercises, one can learn to be more sensitive to these movements of the soul and discern which ones are from God and which ones are from the enemy. But why do you need any other way of listening to God's voice when His word is already clearly written in the Bible? The commandments are very clear. The exercises are not for the easy questions with obvious answers. It is a skill that one needs to practice and always under the guidance of a spiritual mentor. In time, one learns to be quiet, to listen and obey. How many years have you applied yourself to formal studies, Senor Loyola? Two years of basic studies at Barcelona, one year at Alcalá, and now just starting here at Salamanca. And of those years, how many in theology? Less than a year. Oh. And yet you are now preaching a rather complex and detailed method of prayer. The method comes from my own experiences of prayer and discernment. It has helped many people find solace and direction. I am sure. I think there is a simple explanation for all these strange and questionable happenings around the accused. This man is one of the alumbrados. Illuminati. Blasphemers who think themselves inspired directly by God, who say they hear his voice and have surrendered their will and self-control completely to the divine, and therefore, of course, are incapable of sin. Anyone who knows me, Your Honor, knows that I will be the last man to claim that I am not capable of sin. But how else can a man of limited education speak so fully and knowledgeably about movements of the spirit? My lords, I have submitted all my writings about the exercises to you. If you see things in them contradictory to doctrine, I shall correct them right now. For now, there is nothing in terms of doctrine that is wrong in the writings we have seen. Or you will have been burned already. Just like you yourself would be burned if you had committed heresy. This is a time when the church is being tested. Many heresies abound. I believe we should leave these exercises for the scholars of the church to study and approve first before you are allowed to share them. By all that is holy. I beg you. Do not ask me to wait decades for the approval of every theologian in Rome. There is a war raging right now, as real and terrifying as any you have seen against any tyrant. The people of God have been made blind. They cannot hear. They cannot feel themselves slipping into the abyss. And that is why I wrote this. This book is a manual of war. It makes clear the battle lines and allows us to hear our commander's voice. No! I cannot stop teaching what I have learned. We are the army of God. And if I can bring but one more soldier into the camp of my Lord, then I am willing to suffer this tribunal's punishment for it. I will let God be the final judge of us all. Your companions tell me of a journal that you have kept daily since leaving Loyola. You have submitted to us all your writings about the spiritual exercises, except this journal. Why? Are they absent because they contain the erroneous and blasphemous origins of your exercises? 
Certainly not. Then why withhold them? Let this tribunal see everything so that Holy Mother Church can judge it in its entirety. You said so yourself in this very book, sir. A spirit that works in light and openness is good, while a spirit cloaked in secrecy and deception is evil. Which spirit is working in you now, Brother Inigo? Very well. I move that these proceedings be suspended and resume tomorrow morning to give time for this alumbrado to reconsider. You were hiding this from me. The Inquisition considers it a vital piece of evidence, Inigo. Where is this journal? It will not help us. You know what this council is capable of. Do you really want to die? Very well. Tomorrow you seal your fate. My dear knight, nobody knows about this, and no one will remember, except us. I have been informed of the events at Salamanca by my friend and your sister, Doña Magdalena. I was sorry to hear of your injury at Pamplona, but I am heartened to know that you have taken up a new life, and that your heart is full. I must tell you, but on the night we met in Valladolid, I looked for the library, for I meant to hurl myself out of the window and end my misery. The long years of imprisonment and ill treatment by my mother, it was too much for my young soul to bear, and I wanted a swift end to it all. But instead of death, I met a man of passion and fire, a knight in all but name who knelt before me and said it would be an honor to die for me. At times, all it takes to save a life is for one person to clearly see what is precious in you. You saved my life, and you will save many more as a knight of God. You are his light, his fire. Do not forget. May your new lady, our queen of heaven, keep you strong and be always with you, as I could never be. Yours, always, Catalina. Everyone is escaping. Yes. E everyone except us. Everyone except us. Uh, 
Buenos días, padre. You're still here. Of course. The prisoners, they're, they're all gone. So I heard. You did not attempt to go with them. How many escaped? 26. How many have they captured? 12. I had no plans of being the 13th. And the missing journal. I shall tell you where it is. I have kept these pages far from Prynice for a simple reason. There is more than enough there to condemn thee. If the tribunal wishes. A cell. Lunatic. I did not want people to doubt what I had taught them. That the exercises that help them now came at such a horrifying cost. But I see now it is no longer up to me. Either God will guide your mind to see that my pain and my gift are worthwhile. Or he will use the tribunal to silence me. Either way, I will obey. Today, the whip and fasting. And then again, the whip. It is all I can think of. How much pain I can place upon myself in pitiful atonement for my great sins. Pitiful. Worthless sinner. I am ashamed before God that I ever betrayed his holy and blameless name. How wretched I am. Like a worm or maggot in the presence of the most beautiful being in the world. Her journey started quite well. DNA in you go? Such fire in your belly. Nobody's asking you to be a hero. Such a twinkle in your eye. Your small efforts at the hospital. How great. The great saint. The servant of God. La reencarnación de San Francisco. How the beggar must have blessed your name for your generosity. How badly you wanted to fit the part in this grand play. Your own Amadis de Gaula. Our sterling knight offering the bloody sword in the kingdom to the most pure and chaste queen of heaven. Inigo of Loyola, faithful soldier of Castile. How many have you killed? You will kill me, yes. You will always be Darkness is waiting for you. Not just your enemies, but also your compatriots. Your brother soldiers you betrayed. Betrayed? Do you see any illusions of glory in their eyes? You. You could have saved them, but you wanted to die. <laughs> Behold thine own self. Behold your past. Behold your nature and your destiny. <laughs> Are you strong enough to bear the 70 years of misery your God has prepared for you?
Choice for someone like you. The past cannot be erased, and your future is already set. <laughs> you will die a sinner, Inigo. Of that, you can be certain. You will die, and you will burn. What you do between now and the fire, it doesn't matter. So, why prolong the wait? <laughs> That's right! It's better this way. You cannot presume to ever appease God's wrath. Face it! Head on! As a true knight would! creature. Now, I know your voice. Now, I know your lies. You cannot even promise me an hour of life. I will not offend you, my liege. I will not take the life I have sworn to him. Now, voice of the fallen one, be silent and be gone.
I once asked a man to break my leg so that it would heal and be whole again. For the same reason, I needed God to break my spirit. Fortunately, God is a much better surgeon than man. When one is released from a death sentence, life suddenly looks completely different. We were both called that, you know? The creature that you defeated and me, we were both called the Morning Star. But now you know the difference. Now you know my voice. My Lord. Get up, my friend. I am ashamed to stand before you, my Lord. Why? Because I am a sinner. What does that mean to you? I have offended thee. I have harmed thee. Harmed me? Why do you say so? My detestable sins, my lord. When you grow up, my sins will nail you to the cross. Do you think your sins would have any power over me if I did not allow it? now at the world with new eyes and tell me what you see I see all the things in the world being created for me all the things that have sustained me all the things that gave me strength These have worked to bring me to you. Remember, my soldier, I loved you first. Take, Lord, and receive my liberty. My mind, my memory, my entire will. All I have, you have given me, and these to thee I return. Do with them as you wish. Grant me only your love and your grace. That is enough. For that, I will live. Your story is compelling, Loyola, but your method is still too unfamiliar to be allowed without question. I'm still inclined to silence you. Tell me why you should not burn.
I once had a dream about these wheels and this pot. It was winter time. An old wolf and a young wolf were starving, and they came upon a castle. A pot of food was lowered from the castle wall, and they tried one by one to take the food inside the pot, but of course, it would swing from side to side. It was only when the two wolves worked together, one standing opposed to the other, did they finally get to eat their fill. We are a church of opposites, of both action and the thought, passion and humility, fire and water. We are not enemies, Father Frias. We are the balance that glorifies God. At Pamplona, the soldier, Inigo, rallied his troops against impossible circumstances. The castle walls had been breached. Enemy troops were massing towards them. And he chose to leap forward into the breach in an attempt to repel the invaders. Many would say this was an act of madness. A reasonable man would have surrendered and called it inevitable. But this is not a reasonable man. Or rather, he reasons from valor, from first principles. His teachings are sound, unconventional, unfamiliar, new, but sound. Was San Francisco not unconventional? Was Santo Domingo not new? Was Christ himself not radical and thoroughly unfamiliar to the Sanhedrin? My lords, the walls of the church have been breached. We live in a time of reckoning when things done in the shadows shall be brought to light. If this man's only heresy is calling upon us to be better than we are, then we cannot condemn him. The church has always been broken, but the church is alive. And to stay alive, we must learn to listen to people like him, people willing to face the front lines and lead the church where it fears to go. In Ezekiel, God said, the people of the land have oppressed the poor and needy. And I sought for a man among them who would build up that wall and stand in the breach before me that I should not destroy it, but I found none. That is what this man does. He stands in the breach, and he fights. What is that? The people have asked me for a special mass for Brother Indigo's sake. It is incredible. I have never seen the church so full. The accused will rise. Inigo Lopez de Oñazi Loyola. After having been examined thoroughly by this tribunal, you are hereby meted out this judgment. On the charge of heresy and blasphemy, the tribunal has searched for grievous errors in the exercises that you have propagated and has found none. You are innocent. However, 
on the charge of preaching without proper authority, the tribunal withholds its judgment, opting instead to sternly forbid you and your companions from preaching to the public, except to children, about only the basic and simple truths of the gospel. The tribunal is adjourned. Inigo. Padre Sanchez. <laughs> Thank you so much for your help. It seems that we have been spared from mistake. But your work. Technically, the sentence forbids you from preaching anything at all. I listen and obey. Brother Inigo. Yes, Your Honor. I would like to offer you some advice, if you would accept it. Of course, Your Honor. The judgment of this tribunal holds only within the jurisdiction of Salamanca. You may continue to do your work in other places. But I urge you to complete your studies so that no one may question your training anymore. But... But it costs money to pursue studies. And that is where I think I might be of silent assistance. Take this letter to the headmaster of the College of Santa Barbara in Paris. He will tell you what the next steps to take will be. And do not worry. All will be well. I am humbled, Your Honor. But I don't think I deserve this. Surely a more learned candidate can... We have enough scholars and poets. Perhaps in this age, what the Church needs is the mind of a soldier. We are called the Church Militant, after all. <laughs> Paris. I implore you to accept. <laughs> My first year of university at 33 years old. <laughs> <laughs> the prophet is never welcome in his hometown. Neither are crippled dreamers, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> the French gave me this limp, and this limp brought me to God. Probably the French can do something with my head. Doña Inés sends this supplies. <laughs> this letter of credit. And I stand reminder to remember to eat. <laughs> you can give her my sincere thanks. And my promise to obey her as much as I have obeyed her in the past. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Callisto, your last chance. You really don't want to come. My place is here. We shall miss your love and your wisdom. But there is lots to do here in Spain. Come, brothers. Come. Let's pray for our friend. May God grant you safe passage in all your journeys ahead. find companions worthy of your dreams. May your plans always be bold, and may your courage rise to meet them. May you live to bring the love of God to all the corners of the earth. to the most distant peripheries of his church.
major passion always burn brightly that in God's time you may set the world on fire.